Hello and welcome to the bonus of CGE Q&A. I am Sakina Bunch, a relationship health and wellness coach. Today we're going to be talking about three myths of diabetes and the truth that can set you free. I did this talk on the last week's Q&A. However, I kind of sounded like I had a frog in my throat. <laughs> so I wanted to give you some extra bonus bonus footage with this Q&A. It is not to take the place of next, uh, this Wednesday's coming up Q&A, which is really gonna be a good one. But this one, we're gonna be talking about the three myths surrounding diabetes and the truth that can set you free. So it's important to know that there are two types of diabetes. Generally, when we talk about diabetes, we talk about type two diabetes. That's the diabetes that is associated with food with obesity, with many other facets other than being born with it, okay? So type one diabetes is the one that is diagnosed while you are a child. It has been known as juvenile diabetes. However, it tends to be one that at least I haven't seen you grow out of it. So we're gonna dig into some of these. Let's see, I have uh, Terrell and Ashley and Felice. Hey, and Kimberly and Letitia. Hi, y'all. Great to see y'all on here. So myth one is foods labeled with diabetes or that they are diabetes friendly or they are sugar free are ideal diabetic food. This cannot be further from the truth. The reason why this is not true is because just like with most sugar free foods, you want flavor. The sugar is what puts the flavor in there. So if the sugar is not added to create that flavor for you, then there has to be other items that are in there that's going to create that flavor for you. So generally, they put in chemical sugar substitutes, which actually are 200 times sweeter than your regular sugar. They'll also put in extra fats in there to make it flavorful. When you see something that says fat-free, look at the sugar content because chances are the sugar content is high. If you look at something that says sugar-free, look at the fat content because chances are the fat content is high. So these are things that you really want to take into account. Next, your best choices. So if I give you something and I tell you this is not good for you, you should stay away from it, I'm going to give you your choice of what you can go to. I don't like to just leave you hanging, okay? So, hey, Brianna, how you doing? Uh, best choices, high fiber foods. Mm -hmm. So you want foods that are packed with fiber. Now, a lot of times we'll think, oh, well, that means grains. Well, no, because grains are also packed with sugar. And when they break down in your body, they break down into sugar. So you don't want to go toward the grains for your fiber. You can have fiber in flax seeds. In fact, seeds are great for fiber leafy veggies. Um, let's see, what's another? Oh, I love sweet potatoes. Now, when I was growing up, we would have like that sweet potato casserole with the marshmallows on top. Okay, so that was nothing but sugar. <laughs> that was not good for us. But when you have a baked potato and you have the skin that's on the outside of it, that skin is packed with fiber. So you want to eat that skin. Don't want to just throw that away. Hey, Greg, how you doing? I'm doing very well, Brianna. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right. And so a superfood for a diabetic, honestly, a superfood is going to be broccoli. Like why broccoli? Broccoli has a chemical inside of it that will help regulate your blood sugar. And we'll talk about what that chemical is a little bit later, but it will definitely help to regulate your blood sugar. Oh, thank you, my love about my skin. <laughs> I love seeing all your little comments. It's just awesome. <laughs> uh, let's see. Next, second myth, okay? Second myth is people with diabetes never should have sweets. Well, I'm a firm believer sweet for the sweet, okay? <laughs> so I will never tell you eliminate it all because when you have those all or nothing diets, okay? Pronounced it that way for a reason, diet. Something tends to die inside. You start thinking of all the things that you can't eat and never really focus on the wonderful things that you can eat. So yes, I'm going to say, you know, diabetics can have sweets. 
everything must be in moderation. But now I'm not saying go out there, go get the Twinkie, the Ho-Ho, and the whole sleeve of Oreos. That's not what I'm saying. What I would like to convey is that when you are choosing your sweets, you choose wisely. So, for example, we have a sugar detox that we do. And I've created it so that you never miss out on those things that you crave. You just make more educated choices in how you crave them. So we have this apple crisp that we make that is absolutely delicious and it is perfect for the diabetic. We have a whole slew of wonderful desserts that are just altered. Sometimes we just have to train our brain to think differently. So we have these desserts that are perfect for not just the diabetic, but for the person who is, you know, just trying to eat less sugar and they're very satisfying and they kill that craving. Okay, so yes, you can, but if you don't get anything else out of what I'm saying, right? Forget the recipes, forget any of the other things, right? Maintaining a healthy lifestyle is really what's gonna help you out, okay? So when you're thinking about uh, your brain, for example, right? Your brain needs carbs. I'm looking at the camera for a reason. Your brain needs carbs. You will have these diets that tell you you cannot have any carbs, okay? Any diet that tells you you have to cut out whole food groups, and I don't mean like, you know, just don't eat grains or don't, no, I'm talking about whole food groups like carbs, like proteins, like, you know, whole nutrients, okay? If it tells you to do that, please be leery. It may be great for the short term, but for the long term, your body will suffer. So your brain needs carbs because that's what it functions off of. Now, one teaspoon of sugar, okay, glucose, is sufficient for your body. You don't need any more than that. Our problem is we like to have 22 <laughs> teaspoons of it, and that's where we fall into an issue. So don't go the processed route no processed sugars, okay? You want to go the route of healthy sugars. The sweet potatoes are great. Fruits, mangoes, apples, delicious. These are the fruits, the vegetables, the foods that you really want to be eating because that's what your brain runs off of. You want to stop that brain fog? Eat whole foods. I mean, it, it really is simple. Really, it's just that simple. Okay. And second part, always do your research when you're about to embark on any type of diet. Next, myth number three, because, and this is my favorite one, okay? Because it runs in my family, I am destined to get diabetes. That is so not true. I tell this story all the time. My husband is one of six siblings. Every last sibling has had diabetes. Every last one. Three of them have already died from diabetic complications. He is the only one that does not have diabetes. It is not a generational curse if you do not choose for it to be, okay? So we attribute that not to, you know, he, he, he was made different. No, because they all have the same genes, right? It's just that he has chosen to have a different lifestyle. So what we did was we kind of packaged his lifestyle up <laughs> into a sugar detox, which works. And this sugar detox, now my husband's lifestyle can be a little complicated. He's not a complicated man, but sometimes his lifestyle can be complicated. And so we kind of, I don't want to say dummied it down, but we simplified it. We simplified it into the bare necessities. And as we put this sugar detox together and people have been using it, Oh my goodness, we have seen diabetics minimize their A1C. I'm talking like double digits to single digits, okay? We have seen people lose weight like crazy. My husband, he lost 26 pounds in 28 days, okay? Not suffering either. So when you think about how you want to live your life, do you want to live your life in sickness? Do you want to live your life in health, don't go by what the myths say, okay? 
the myths are out there, okay? Everybody's got something to say. Go by what the facts say. Now, if you need reviews on even the sugar detox that we do, please go to my Facebook page, Sakina. Uh, um, couldn't you remember my dog on Facebook page? <laughs> Clean Good Eats with Sakina B. Go to the review section. It is there, okay? The progress that people have made on this sugar detox. But again, if you don't hear anything else I say, you don't even hear about the CGE sugar detox. You don't hear anything about that. Three things to remember. Eat right, exercise, reduce stress. Now, will I tell you that there is a science to it? Oh yeah, there's a science to it. But hey, if those are the three things that you are going to remember, then my work is done. Now, if you say to yourself, I've tried that and I need some help. We have the tools for you. The next sugar detox starts January the 6th. Yes, we did that purposely because we want to make sure that you enjoy your December because we know that starting a sugar detox in the midst of all this holiday food, you got Hanukkah, you got Christmas, you got Kwanzaa. No, okay, that's just not going to happen. So January 6th, we've even given you a whole week in the new year to get it out your system. January 6th is when we start our new sugar detox. We've got recipes. We've got exercise regimens. We, reg, regimen. <laughs> we have a built-in accountability group just for you. Go, please, check it out. Check it out. Cleangoodeats.com is where you can find the sugar detox. But also, again, I am going to send out, I think I might have already sent it out, but I'm not sure if I did or didn't. I'm going to send out the infographic on these three myths and what counteracts these myths. If y'all have any questions, please feel free to post them in the comment section. I see Felice said, same dietary recommendations for hypoglycemia. Yes, yes, and yes. Uh, because it's a balancing out of sugar, okay? So whether it's too high or whether it's too low, the problem is it's not balanced. When you think about someone who has hyperglycemia and someone with hypoglycemia, both people suffer with the same issue. They have a hormone imbalance. They have a blood sugar imbalance. So those are the things that we are targeting. We're targeting those imbalances to try to balance some things out. Now, I did promise you that I was gonna tell you why broccoli is like this awesome, awesome superfood, right? Broccoli has a substance in it called chromium. Mm -hmm. And chromium helps to balance out your blood sugar along with magnesium. Those two beautiful, beautiful substances, I tell you. Magnesium, I call that my happy pill <laughs> because it really does. It boosts, it boosts your mood. But other things that you want to be looking for when you're looking at any type of eating style that is conducive to a diabetic lifestyle, you want fiber, you want protein, you want healthy fats, and you want a sense or a source of carbs, okay? These are the four things that you're looking for. A source of carbs is important, okay? So even in our sugar detox, we have carbs that we give, but again, they are healthy carbs balanced out. Healthy fats, sometimes we think about, well, you know, what, what really is a healthy fat? Okay, a burger, yeah, it's fat, <laughs> depending on the kind of burger you're getting, okay? But when we think of healthy fats, I'm thinking of nuts, seeds, coconut oil. Those are healthy fats. Those are the ones that you want to be looking for. Some things that you kind of want to stay away from, dairy. I know, y'all, dairy. And the reason you want to stay away from most dairy, not saying all dairy, but most dairy is because many people are lactose intolerant, right? But anything that's got the word os at the end of it is a sugar. So yeah, dairy has sugar in it. And then if you're getting conventional dairy, they're putting even more sugar in it. So you're getting sugar on top of sugar. So you do kind of want to stay away from those. You also want to stay away from things like grains. Um, the reason you want to stay away from most grains is because, again, they break down into sugar in your body. So you want to choose items that maybe like spaghetti squash or something that can give you that grain feel 
that, you know, psych your mind out. Uh, but that is not actually a grain or a gluten containing grain. All right. Well, I hope, I hope that helped y'all. I, I really do. I, I love coming to y'all each week. And I know I normally come on Wednesdays, but today I just felt that, you know, I did y'all such a disservice last week <laughs> when I had my little frog in my throat. So better this week. Yay. And I just wanted to give y'all a little bit more. So I'm hoping that that helped you. If it did, please leave a message in the comment section because I would love to hear from you. If you have any questions, leave those in the comment section too. And I'll be looking at that throughout the day and I will add uh, hopefully some answers to your questions. All right. Well, I look forward to seeing y'all on Wednesday. I don't even remember what Wednesday's Q&A is. It's on my calendar somewhere. But I will tell you that last month was Diabetes Awareness Month. December for CGE, we are extending that because I, I know that this is a time, just that end of November to first part of January, it's a rough time for people with any sort of disease where food is involved. Oh, thank you, Erica. I'm glad that you appreciate that no matter when I do it. Thank you. Um, yeah, so this is just a rough time of year for people with allergies, people with diabetes, people with high blood pressure, cholesterol. It's just a rough time because it's so focused on food. So we're extending that and I'll probably be popping in with some recipes. I have a recipe that I'm going to be doing hopefully for our upcoming Intimacy Begins in the Kitchen Couples cooking class, which is called Red white and cream delight. It's a dessert that's also in my cookbook, but I'm, I'm going to do that recipe because I, I just love that recipe and some other recipes as well to get y'all to see that there is a larger pond <laughs> out there. It's a whole ocean out there. and We don't have to just stay in our, our little, you know, box boat, but there, there are foods out there that really can nourish us as well as of our cravings and just help us to be healthy. That's all we want, right? It's just to be healthy so, healthy so that we can live long instead of living short and dying long. All right. Thank you so much again for tuning in. I look forward to seeing y'all soon. Cleangoodeats.com if you want more information on the sugar detox. I am Sakina Bunch, your relationship health and wellness coach. Until next time. Bye-bye.